Have you ever been on your way home and you need to make hot water really quick for dinner? If only there was an app where you could turn on the electric kettle before you got home so that by the time you got home, the water would already be warm. Well, now we have such an app. Alexa, turn on the kettle. In today's video, we're making an automatic kettle. It turns itself on. All right, just to take you guys through the design process a little bit, we have our kettle with the switch on the side. It's full of water, and we're gonna put a little servo over here to flip the switch, and here's a little base that we're gonna use. So when we say on, it's gonna turn the servo and turn the kettle on. And then alternately, when we say off, it's gonna turn the servo the other way, which will turn the switch off. To make the project a little easier, I'm gonna install this two USB outlet plug where I had just a regular plug before. So first thing, I turn off the electricity, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start unscrewing the old plug to replace it with the new plug. You could also use a five volt power supply with this instead of uh, changing out your plug if you wanna do that. These plugs are super handy, and you can find a link for them in the description. So I got to the very end of the project and realized that I didn't have the correct faceplate, so you'll see me holding it up, but I won't have anything to replace it with. So finally screwing this back on. And I don't have the right faceplate. So on to the next step. So the first thing I did was I cut out around where the, uh, where the kettle was before, and I made this uh, little stand here. And next you'll see me sand file it down. And I made, I was trying to make a little chamfer on the edge. And then I'm going to file this little block of wood that I, it's going to hold our servo later. So now I'm marking out the servo, uh, where it's going to go. And then I'm going to drill two holes in the corners and go ahead and cut those out with a scroll saw. Actually, it's a band saw. Now I'm gluing on. Okay, here you see me testing out the functionality for the servo, flipping the switch on the side, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue it up. Alright, let's quickly go over the parts that we're going to use. So we have the Wemos board in the middle. On the right hand side is a MOSFET board that I ended up not using. And on the left hand side is the servo that we're going to use. It already has the connector with the wires in it. And then we also have the uh, header next to the Wemos board that we're gonna solder on in the next step. And this is gonna allow us to hook the servo on easier. All right, the next thing I discovered was that the Servo connector pins were not in the correct order when I tried to when I tried to use them as they were connected to the servo as I got it. So I noticed that you can actually disconnect these pins and put them in whatever order you want. So that's the next thing I'm going to try. So first I hooked it up to the Wemos mini board with the ground on the black pin. The red is on 5 volts and the white is on I think it's pin D D2. And that's the way that I actually hooked it up here. And then later I'm going to put the pins back in the connector so it's easier to connect. With that being done, uh, let's go to the code. So in the Arduino GUI, we're going to first set up our ESP8266 board by adding this line and then go actually go and select the board type, generic ESP8266. And then we're going to look at the example sketch, which is called uh, ESP8266 Servo, and then the sweep example. And here we have it on the screen, and this is the code we're going to start with for our example. Upload the code. And... What I noticed, I, I couldn't figure out what was going on at first, and I ended up having to switch the pin back to D4. And I'll show you a pinout diagram in a minute, but that uh, that caused it to start working the way it's supposed to. So it's supposed to sweep back and forth from 180 to 0. 
and I went ahead and put the pins in back in the connector in the correct order and these pins just snap in so you just push them in and they will snap and in, in place and this is the actual pin out diagram of how you want to hook it up hooking it back up just to make everything sure everything still worked you'll notice that I also clipped a couple of the horns off of the servo and I painted it white so it's a little bit easier to see on the video and hooking that back up everything still worked as it was supposed to all right for our sketch we're gonna start with the code from the, from the Keiko Papa site and we're gonna use the basic switch code we're gonna start with that and then from the Cenric site we're gonna copy in our specific API key that we use from that site into this this code right here and then we're also gonna update the Wi-Fi ID and password and then create a new device ID I call mine kettle you can call yours whatever and then we're gonna copy that device ID into the turn on and turn off functions next we're gonna go back to the sweep sketch and we're gonna copy the headers the library there and also the setup for the servo which is to set the pin number of the servo and also to set the pin number of the servo and then also we're going to copy the function which is the sweep we're going to rename it to kettle on and we're going to copy it again and it's kettle off next we're going to copy kettle on the function call to the turn on part of our sketch and that'll turn the kettle on and then kettle off to the turn off function of our sketch after some experimentation I found out that the initial position of the servo should be 90 degrees so that's what I'm doing here after some tinkering I developed the, this code to turn the kettle on and this code to turn the kettle off basically the only changes were the number of degrees to sweep for on and off finally set your port to the correct port and upload your code and you should be done Alexa, turn on the kettle. Okay. Alexa, turn off the kettle. Okay. I hope this home automation project was interesting to you, even as simple as it was. And I would say probably it cost me less than, and I hope this inspires you to do some interesting projects of your own at home. So, all right, so um, please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.